Hello and welcome everyone to Chicken Police and we are back here in the insane asylum where we are trying to track down Eben Wessler's brother. Um, we are a little bit creeped out by the looks of it. I think that is understandable. It does not look very pleasant, but we have to continue our investigation to find out what is behind the threats towards Natasha what was up with the dead body and so much more. So let's waste no time and uh, look around a little bit. And the first thing that jumps right at me is this colored mural. This picture. It's very special. Okay, we have a fox there. This pick it's special. I I wonder what it has uh what's up with that because like the pretty much the only other colored things that we've seen uh, uh things like Natasha's green eyes and um the red paint on the wall and all this mural. So I wonder if that has a deeper meaning as to what things are colored and uh, why they're colored, if, if there's a reason behind it. This guy seems strangely familiar to me. You don't say. You've been treated here too. That would explain a lot. Oh, don't be stupid. I'm serious. Take a closer look. No. Well? No, it can't be. Are you telling me it's him? M.B. Davis himself? I'm sure of it, pal. It seems the gossip was true. The eternal king of jazz in a madhouse. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. The poor devil. Huh. It doesn't matter how big a star you once were. Ending up lonely and crazy in a rotting insane asylum in the middle of nowhere is like the universe restoring its balance. That was very uh, poetic of you, Marty. Yeah. Almost deep. Careful you don't drown. Marty. Fuck you. Even if you manage to escape, there's nothing but hills and forests for a hundred miles. Imagine how many poor lunatic ghosts must haunt those woods. Ooh, Sonny. Yeah. You're creeping me out. This is getting creepy. Why does it always have to be an insane asylum? Let's talk to Miranda. Ah, like an angel from heaven, isn't she? Yeah, half of her's still up there, I think. <laughs> That's rude. Ah, oh, boo-hoo. <laughs> of uh, all the that great was a good wild one. ones. We don't even see a face. <laughs> Greetings, miss. Is it really you? Well, uh, yes. Yes, it really is you, the chicken police. In the flesh. I'm afraid so. Oh, of all that's furry and plumy, that's fantastic. Oh, my goodness. Uh, miss, we'd like to ask... Please, don't be scared. I'm just really, really, really excited. You know, I've read every book about you and your adventures, and I even collected newspaper articles when I was a little girl. Okay, we have a fan. Indeed. You can't imagine what an honor it is to meet you in person. The honor is ours. We really... Oh God, oh God, oh God. Take a deep breath, Miranda. Take a deep breath. Oh boy. Are you okay, miss? Is she fainting on us? Yes, I am. I just needed some air. So, dear detectives, Santino and Martin, what can I do for you? Well, miss, uh, we have some questions, if you don't mind. Exactly. I'd love to answer all of your questions, detectives. Okay, so... Achievement unlocked. Police squad. What does that mean? Um, let's have a look at the... 
book. There's still one person missing here, which is interesting. Two, per two people missing. Okay. Miranda the nurse. Full of life, full of hope, full of almost everything. And she is a big fan of us, fortunately. An overly nice nurse we met behind the desk at the asylum. Nurse Miranda, and she's a huge fan of the chicken police. I mean, who isn't a fan? There. A mental institute with a ridiculous long name and a ridiculous long history. According to the pictures, it looks just like the castle of the vampire bats in those cheap horror movies. Great. Okay, nothing new there. Well, let's continue. Let's ask about the uh, asylum. Say, miss, uh, what can you tell us about this place? Our institution was standing even before the Great Meat War, and during the war, it was transformed into a military hospital. Since then, we are relentlessly working on treating injured minds under the leadership of Dr. Quetzal, the famous specialist. Quetzal, okay. The place seems pretty empty. Do many people work here? We have 32 residents and seven nurses, including me. We also have a three-person maintenance and cleaning staff, and, of course, the heart and soul of our institution, Dr. Quetzal himself. Okay, but what are those three people for that are doing maintenance and cleaning doing? Because this place looks rough. I see. Now, this Dr. Quetzal, is he the director here? Exactly. Director, scientist, researcher, patron, and doctor. And even a friend. Okay. Quite a guy. Seems he so. certainly is. Dr. Sesuus Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl. So who is this Dr. Quetzal exactly? He's a world-famous researcher of the mind, Mr. Featherland. He published countless books in the fields of psychology and psychotherapy. Psycho what? Yeah, Marty, that's that's a little bit too much for you. Unraveling the mind. <laughs> it's the most crucial mission of the century, Mr. McChicken. That's really good to know. So this doctor's some celebrity, right? Does he usually meet uh, other important persons? I'm not sure I know what you mean. Well, like, uh, Mr. Hobart Wessler, for example. Ah, uh, yes. That's something you should ask the doctor himself, but unfortunately, I don't think he has time right now. Why not? He's swamped, is he? Exactly, Mr. Featherland. He is very, very, very busy. All the time. Hmm. I thought so. Well, we have this strange wristband. Now, what can you say about this, miss? Have you uh, seen anything like it? Of course. Our residents wear these for identification. But how did you come by it? They only wear them inside the institution. Huh. I see. The wristband does belong to one of our residents. But I'm afraid I'm not allowed to tell you more due to regulations. I understand. Oh, come on, Miranda. It's us, the chicken police. I'm sorry, I, I can't. I thought you were a fan. Miranda, this case is a matter of life and death. Lives are in your hands. Yes, Marty. <sighs> All right. All right. I'll do it. Albert Wessler. The patient's name is Albert Taddeus Wessler. Okay. Figures. Just as we thought. So we have the confirmation. Thank you, Miranda. We'll never forget this. Please, don't make me blush. And don't tell anyone you heard it from me. Of course oh, we won't. Not. I promise. So, can you tell us more about Albert Taddeus Wessler? So when can we talk to Mr. Wessler? I need to ask Dr. Quetzal. Please wait here. Okay. Thank you. We should go to reception first. Let them know we're here. 
we just did that. Anything else that we can do in the meantime? Let's have a look at the book where we have Dr. Quetzal. Dr. Cesarus Quetzal Kotl. Green Tree Python. Cold, distant, professional, and he gives me the creeps. About right. Dr. Quetzal will see you. He's oh. waiting for you in his office. Up the stairs, all the way down the hall, until the last door. What a surprise. It's enough to mention Wessler's name and all the doors are open. Right. I wouldn't want to get mixed up in this, but do you think Albert is in danger? Danger? Hmm. What do you mean? We haven't heard from him since he disappeared, and we're really, really worried. Well, I see. Uh, we don't know yet, miss, but let's hope for the best. So he Great is officially missing. Protect him. That is good to Where know. Where is he? No idea, Marty. <clears throat> the smell ugh, of all that's furry. I'll never get used to it. Well, reptiles have a disgusting body odor, Marty. <laughs> well, he's but sitting they there. feel exactly the same about us. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, there he is. He looks very trustworthy. Great wild ones. You scared the hell out of me. I already sensed your arrival from afar. You know, snakes have a different sense of smell. And birds used to be our prey once upon a time. Well, yeah. Luckily, we're living in civilized times. That's true. Lucky. Hope we keep it that Please way. Take a seat. How can I help you, gentlemen? Okay, there he is. Just hanging out. The music is just creeping me out. Nervous. Now we have a proper picture there. Look around. Your office is uh, rather Puritan. <laughs> Simple, I mean. Yeah, there's three people who do maintenance and cleaning really do a great job here. Ain't that the truth? Well, yes. I can't let my mind wander from my work. I only keep what's essential in my office. I see. That makes sense. Sure, no. An isle of reason in a sea of insanity. Insanity is such a strong word, and it's mostly an abstract idea. Where does insanity start, and how long is one not insane? Interesting questions. Am I normal, or are you? Maybe neither of us. You see, that's something I think about a lot nowadays. Yeah. If you like, I can give you an appointment. Oh, this is your chance, Sonny. Don't miss it. We're already <laughs> here. <laughs> Marty, clock up. Is this cell like, uh, like the others? I would rather call it a room. But yes, it's like all the others, except there are even bigger ones than this. Okay. Why do you have bars on your windows? Because it's a room like all the others, and I'm just an animal too, like all our residents. With the significant difference of you being a doctor and not a patient, am I right? It's not as big of a difference as you'd think. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Dr. Quetzal. A snake. I can't help it, but they make my feathers stand on end. To be honest, gentlemen, your visit is anything but a surprise. I could even say I was expecting it. Is that so? And why is that? What an introduction. 
Please forgive me. I have the bad habit of immediately getting into the middle of things. How very rude of me. My name is Dr. Sessuous Quetzalcoatl, but most call me Dr. Quetzal to keep it simple. Okay. The name is Santino Featherland, and this is my partner, Martin McChicken, from... From the predatory division of the Clawville Police Department. Your fame is one step ahead of you. Yeah, we're pretty famous. No big deal. Uh, we're used to it. Yeah. Certainly. We have some questions about one of your patients, if you don't mind. We'd like to talk to him, if that's possible. Please be specific, detective. Look, Doctor, we're too tired to play cat and mouse. Not that snake and chicken sounds any better. Very funny, I must say. Just what I expected from you two detectives. We know Thank you. you know it's about Albert Wessler, Ibn Wessler's secret twin. Ever since we've said his name, all the doors have miraculously opened. That's what we call a bullseye. Well, yes. Why should I deny it? We're talking about a rather illustrious patient here, who's also a very particular medical case. No, okay, how that's so? That's much more interesting. So, are you willing to talk about him? Because Albert regrettably has disappeared, and you are police detectives, I have no reason not to talk to you. Of course, I'm at your service. But you must understand, I can't disclose information <sighs> about my patients. Not even if it's a matter of life and death? Everything's a matter of life and death in here, detective. This is a hospital, even if it's primarily for the mind, not the body. Still, I'd like to give the impossible a try. Please, detective, just do your job, and I'll do mine. Hey. Okay. New function. Ask. Okay, let's do exactly that. Albert Teddy's Wesley. How long was Albert a resident of the institution? For quite some time, his first symptoms surfaced in his teens. Depression, panic attacks, and schizophrenia. Oh, interesting. Was he brought here immediately after the first signs that something wasn't right? You know, the biggest problem with an opinion on insanity Sanity is that animals are ashamed of it. That's the reason our institution stands out here in the middle of nowhere. Because animals would rather hide what they're afraid to face. I couldn't have said it better myself. Okay. As far as I know, the Wessler family wasn't exceptionally wealthy. Indeed, they were rather poor, but we offer our services gratis. Gratis. Then how do you sustain yourself? Yeah, that's a good question, Mario. By the grace of the treasury of King Hector the mm. Third, of course. I wouldn't have guessed that. My family, family, and the royal dynasty had always been on good terms, Mr. Santino. That's interesting. Um, before we start the interrogation let's uh, ask him about the asylum what kind of a place is this exactly i assume it wasn't built as an insane asylum it used to be a mansion construction started during the occupation in 622 then it stood empty for almost a century until finally it went to the crown of clawville when hector's great-grandfather took the throne the rest is history how long have you been working here I've worked here for more than 30, 30 years. years, but it's been in my family's possession for almost 150 years. Okay, so it's a family So if I count correctly, affair. as soon as it went to the crown, it was seized by your family. That's almost accurate, Mr. Featherland. What a lovely inheritance. 
Mm hmm So, are you familiar with Madame Zavas? Tell me, Doctor, do you know Madame Zavas? Just like everybody else, I've heard of her, but I never had the pleasure of meeting her in person. I'm sure she's an interesting case. Oh, you can be sure about that. I'd gladly get you two together if I had the chance. A spare cell would suit her very much. <laughs> Is that so? As it turns out, she likes small, narrow, secret places. Oh, I see. What a coincidence. Okay. Here we go. Hmm, Dr. Quetzal's a real mystery. But I can turn that to my advantage. I just need to focus on the strangest pieces of the puzzle. The strangest pieces of the puzzle, okay. When did Albert become a resident of your institute? So when did Albert become a resident of your institute? Albert and Hobart, or Ibn as you call him, arrived here almost exactly four years ago. Could you describe that day uh, more specifically? It was not long after New Year's Eve. Maybe the first week of the year, if I'm not mistaken. It was sleeting that day. Wind was banging incessantly on the windows. The power was going out for short periods of time. Okay, talking. Calm down, like we need to hear more about two. What was your first impression of them? I already knew the Wessler name. I knew who they were. Or at least I knew one of them, Hobart Wessler. He was famous. Gangster, moneylender, celebrity, lover. Lover. And Albert? He was new to me, an invisible gray ghost. The family had tried to keep his existence a secret. Why? Because they were ashamed of him, of course, Mr. Featherland. That's how it usually is. Hmm. What was your first impression of him? He was silent, but observed everything that surrounded him. His eyes were constantly moving, never stopped for a second. Was he afraid? I wouldn't say so. It seemed to me that he wanted to move into our institution voluntarily. Okay. It looked as if he couldn't wait to be here, alone, locked up in silence and darkness. Didn't you that think is interesting. that as unusual? Of course I did. But who am I to judge? It was rather special treatment. Okay, so that was interesting that he voluntarily got here. Addicted to details. What kind of special treatment did Albert get? What kind of special treatment did Albert get? You know, if an institution like ours has to accept a Wessler as a guest, there's bound to be some favoritism. And complete secrecy, I guess. Yes, but that's the case for all our patients, Mr. Featherland. Of course. So in what way did he receive more than the others? Basically, we don't admit anyone into our institution without a complete and thorough prior assessment. In the case of Albert, we put that aside. Oh. So you didn't even know if he had anything wrong with him? Initially, no. He was more of a guest than a patient. Interesting. Daydreamer. I think he was a threat to others. How did... Albert relate to you? Um, let's ask about this since this kind of lets him talk freely and be like very detailed. How did you see Albert when you first How met? How did you see Albert when you first met? Albert was shy and reserved like a ghost. He almost never touched anything. 
It was evident. He was exceptionally intelligent. He measured and observed everything around him. What else? He was delicate and graceful, almost like a woman. Yes. He was rather feminine. He was an artist, Mr. Featherland, a magnificent painter. A painter. A rather good writer. So too. maybe that Sometimes piece of painting heard him was sing. the piece of painting that we found. Maybe that was from a painting of his. Why did he have to be locked up? I asked the same thing at first. Okay, are you telling me Albert had multiple personalities? Are you telling me Albert had multiple personalities? We found out very quickly that there was no other reason for the cause of his seizures. He had a cold and calculating personality who sometimes, especially on stormy days, took the reins over their shared mind. Okay. He had these seizures from the beginning. Yes, Mr. Featherland, but they started to intensify after Albert left our institution for the first time. He did what? Left the institution? More than once? Oh, yes, Mr. Featherland. Albert left the institution on several occasions oh. until the last time when he failed to come back. Wetzel's not only very observant, is, but he's addicted to detail. I must focus on that if I want to get closer to the truth. Focus. Addicted to details. Okay. Hmm. Um. When and why did Albert leave the institution for the first when time? When and why did Albert leave the institution for the first time? It was about two years ago. Mr. Hobart Wessler appeared and demanded we let his brother go free. Naturally, we obliged. We had no idea if we'd ever see him again. But you did. He returned the same day. Albert was ecstatic. He was unrestrained. I could almost say <laughs> happy. Mm. That was unusual for him. I had never seen him like that before, Mr. Featherland. He just smiled and stared at the empty wall for hours. Huh, that is very, very interesting. Did he ever tell you what happened to him outside? Yeah. Of course he did. Albert and I had a good relationship. On a painting, he was yeah. On a painting for his brother. Was it a painting of a lovely lady cat? Oh, exactly. So you already knew about that. Oh, it's probably that uh, that uh, painting in Natasha's room, right? Yes, Dr. Quetzal, I've seen it. Interesting. Uh, did Albert tell you how he felt about the painting? Has Albert ever talked to you about Natasha? But I will tell you about his relationship with his brother. So Albert had left on the occasion to continue the work on the painting. Hmm. Did he tell you about how he felt about the painting? Did Albert tell you how he felt about the painting? From the first moment he loved it. He was fascinated by it. But who could blame him? A little diversity, fresh air, a beautiful lady, and of course, on top of all that, he could finally do what he loved best, paint. Which could be a surprisingly effective therapy. It could have been. Unfortunately, these excursions have greatly intensified his seizures. They have become more frequent and extreme. Interesting. So they... Huh. Oh, this is so interesting with a painting. But did we see, like, a piece missing in Natasha's room? Not that we noticed. But I think at that point we didn't... No, we didn't have that piece of painting, so... 
couldn't have known. I didn't look for it. So Albert had left on many occasions to continue working on the painting. So Albert left on many occasions to continue working on the painting. Exactly, Mr. Featherland. Every time he came back, he was like a different person. But unfortunately, his seizures also multiplied and became more dangerous. More dangerous? Albert was hurting himself. And on one occasion, he even tried to hurt me. It was unprecedented. It seemed his confined personality was taking over their shared mind entirely, piece by piece. Hmm. Do you think the painting caused it? Not the painting, Mr. Featherland. But its subject. Exactly. Huh. He was obsessed right until that fateful day when he returned to us for the last time. What exactly happened that day, Doctor? It wasn't Hobart who brought his brother back that day, but two of his gorillas. Not literally, I mean. And Albert was in a terrible, terrible state. What happened to him? I don't like to talk about that, Mr. Federer. Oh, come on, Quetzal. It could be vital to the case, Dr. Quetzal. Don't back down. Oh, you're right. There's no use turning back now. So, Albert's tongue was torn out. What? Or cut off, I don't know exactly. And he was blinded in one eye. Or rather, one of his eyes was missing entirely jesus so you're saying albert was brought back horribly mutilated yes and they didn't give any explanation as to what had happened they simply told me it was some kind of accident like, what kind of accident would cause that dr quetzal is cold and professional but he's also very confused Maybe it's cruel, but I must exploit his vulnerability if I want to learn everything about Albert. Okay, so he Focus. got confused. Like horribly mutilated. Got his tongue cut out, so he wasn't able to talk, which might lean into my theory about like the swap the, the swap uh, twin theory. Um uh, Okay, let's go with this. Maybe it's not easy for you to talk about it, but did you examine his wounds thoroughly? Maybe it's not easy for you to talk about it, but did you examine his wounds thoroughly? I'm not that kind of doctor, Mr. Featherland, but even I could determine his tongue was either cut out or bitten off and his eye was gouged out. He also had several broken bones. Hmm. But there's no doubt it wasn't an accident. I don't believe it was, Mr. Featherland. I totally agree. Okay. What do you think happened to Albert? What was Albert's condition after the incident? Pull yourself together, Doctor. What was Albert's condition after the incident? Mind your tone, detective. Sorry, Doc, but I can see you're disturbed by these memories. How could I not be? I'm not a monster. We're talking about a mutilated animal here. So, what was he like after the incident? Yeah. Even more silent than ever. No surprise, I suppose. He was not only silent in words, but also in his soul and spirit. What do you mean by that? He never painted anything again, and his seizures completely stopped. Maybe as if it's a different person. That didn't get me far. What happened then? How did Albert disappear? What happened then? How did Albert disappear? A few weeks later, Hobart came to visit Albert one more time. 
Albert had been in terrible condition by then. We even had to transfer him to another cell, a more safe one. What did Hobart do during the visit? He didn't do anything. He just sat and watched his brother, who was <sighs> in an almost vegetative state by then. Couldn't you manage to draw anything out of him? You or Hobart? Nothing. For a while, he was trying to signal something. Perhaps he was too afraid. And most likely, his fingers had been broken too, so he couldn't even write. Do you think Hobart could have killed Albert? It's horrible to say it, but I'm sure of it. How did he disappear in the end? Did someone come for him? That's what's most eerie about it all, Mr. Featherland. He simply disappeared. His door, which only I had a key for, was open. Oh. Hmm. This is all very, very, very interesting. Still don't know exactly what to make Did of it. Did anyone see anything? No one. We interrogated the staff, even the patients. He simply vanished off the face of the wilderness. We don't know what happened to him. Hmm. Unfortunately, I have a hunch. Thank you, Doctor. You've been a great help. Yeah, that was oh, actually well, pretty I'm helpful. I'm glad I could be of help. But please, I now must attend to my work. We I understand, understand, Doctor. Yeah. Thank you. Let's see how we did. I think we did pretty well. 90%! True detective. Oh, did we have that option before? There was an update uh, for it. For the game. So maybe they added that or maybe that is just for this one. I don't remember having the option to retry it. Okay. Have a look at our... Blues here. Still one person missing entirely. Oh, there. The half century occupation. Since the foundation. An attempt to conquer, conquer Clawville has only been made once. The half-century occupation started in 622 and lasted until 677. During this time, the Harar Empire took over all of Clawville's territories except its colonies, which in the end, with the help of Svolasso and Vlavoslavia, took back control over Clawville. Hmm... No, there. No. Can we ask her anything else? Sorry, but I still can't believe it's really you. Neither can we. Yeah. You can't imagine how wonderful it is that I can help you in one of your cases. <gasps> Does this mean it will become a new book? And maybe I will be in it? Uh, miss, those books aren't really... Don't even tell me. No, no, no. I don't want to know. Let it be a surprise instead. Can no, I, I didn't mean... Leave it to me, Sonny. I'm good at this. Thank you, Miss. Your words are very flattering, and we are honored. No, I thank you. I'll never forget this day. Okay. You won't either, that's for sure. We're happy to bring you joy, Miss. Anytime. We need to let them know we're here first. We are here. Wonder if he painted this. And uh, I can't leave. Anything else? Please, I'm at your service. Thank you, miss. Uh, nothing here. Is there anything else here? The 
That's quite shocking information. I think you understand why we kept it a secret. If it wasn't for Mr. Wessler's demand, we'd never let any of our patients walk freely outside our institution. Then the, uh, the accident happened. Accident? <laughs> we didn't believe it, not for a second. After Albert came back to us, horribly mutilated, he was different. Yeah. Different how? If someone got one of his eyes poked out and his tongue torn out, he'd be different, but not like this. Albert was See? a I different person. Still think it may be like a swapped twin situation. We believe you, Doctor. So, can we take a look at Albert's cell? I'd rather call it his room. Mr. Wessler lived in exceptional circumstances. Thanks to the Wessler name, I guess. Yes. Well, we try to make all of our patients stay as comfortable as possible, but Albert certainly enjoyed mm, special favoritism. I hope you don't mind if we take a look around in there. That's not going to bother anyone okay perfect well that's uh surprising i've never seen a cell like this before that's for sure i wouldn't mind living here myself it seems that being a wessler gets you privileges and sure a does. healthy dose of danger mostly that yeah let's take a good look around i'm sure we'll find some answers here I can almost smell them. Well, I smell paint, ink, plaster, some kind of oil, aging paper, slight smell of rat. You have great nose, Marty. Great expectations. What the dickens? Unmistakable. Yeah. This place is bad for you, pal. But if you've already jump-started your beak holes, then sniff out the solution. I'm on it, boss bird. He has a great nose. We we found that out before. <laughs> it's like one of the weird, weirder facts about this game that Marty has a great nose. But hey, why not? Um. Okay. But I think we will take a break here and then we will look around in this room and see if we can find out more. This case is getting more mysterious and curious by the second and I'm loving it. Hope you do too. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Maybe consider subscribing to the channel, share the video with friends, family and the people on the internet. That all helps me out a whole bunch and will bring you more content in the future. I will be back with more Chicken Police tomorrow, and until then, have a great time. <laughs>